coming up on Mountain News this morning, a former Commonwealth educator pleaded guilty to sexually assaulting two students more than a decade ago. And Commonwealth officials are seeing a steady increase in RSV cases this year. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Madison Carmouche. It is 6 a.m. on December 1st, 2023. Let's check in with First Alert meteorologist Cameron Aaron for a look at your forecast this morning. Cameron, we already talked about how I forgot my umbrella, but I do have a rain jacket and I think I'm going to need it. Yeah, some soggy weather this morning, also tracking some breezy weather as well. It's not the best forecast on this first day of December. We are tracking those rain chances to continue for most of your Friday morning, but some improvements on the way for the second half of your Friday. But this morning, as you wake up and walk out the door, be sure to pack the rain gear. More showers are likely zooming into some heavier pockets of rain in the Cumberland Valley for our friends in Wayne County, also close to London and Laurel County, also in Barberville and Knox County, also close to Clay County as well. A a few moderate showers there zooming into portions of Morgan County into Elliott County. Some more light to moderate showers there. Also taking the Mountain Parkway. You may need, may need, you may need the rain gear as that showers does continue there as well. Those temperatures in the middle to upper 40s up to 47 for Jackson. Also Pikeville 45 in Somerset and 42 over in London at this hour. As we go into the rest of your Friday, especially before lunchtime, more showers are likely. And again, those temperatures top out above average on Friday in the middle to upper 50s. But notice after lunchtime, Time, a little bit of a break, only a small chance of a few spotty showers, not as widespread though later on today. Madison. Thank you, Cameron. A former Floyd County educator pleaded guilty yesterday to sexually assaulting two students decades ago. WYMT's Buddy Forbes was in the courtroom and spoke to the assault survivors. Jessica Hensley and Mary Prater stood to the side of the courtroom as April Bradford made her plea, right, okay. anticipating a word one of them has been waiting to hear since 1997. Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. guilty. Freedom. Guilty. Freedom to those stuff of little children that we had, you know, going on in our own bodies. The experience that we were having, you know, today we experience freedom. Freedom for the truth. Bradford, a former educator, coach, and administrator in Floyd County, was accused of sexual assault last year, with incidents that spanned between 1997 and 2007. And a person of her position, they didn't want to believe us because of who she is in the community. But we knew exactly who she was. We knew it. And we might have held it in and kept it quiet, you know, all those years, but we still deep down knew. After entering a plea of not guilty last July, Bradford came to an agreement with attorneys, taking a deal that will put her behind bars for three and a half years. I mean, it's just a huge win for us. Um, it's It's been a long time coming. Um, the community seems somewhat divided. You know, people are always hesitant or they refuse to believe when someone like April really puts out this persona. The women say their respective experiences were hard to come to terms with, but knowing they could potentially keep someone else from feeling their pain is worth bringing the truth to light. And that was one comment that kept coming up to us is why, why did they wait so long? And it's very important for survivors of trauma, any kind of trauma, but especially sexual abuse. To, it takes a while to process and there's a lot of guilt and shame that shame. comes with that. And sometimes it, it may take 20 years, but that's okay. And while they will not see sentencing for Bradford until next year. Justice will serve. The truth will always win in the end. We did this not for revenge, not for anything else other than prevent it from happening to someone else. They found comfort before the court. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> in Floyd County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. Bradford will be on the sex offenders registry for the remainder of her life. She is expected back in court February 29th when the women will have an opportunity to read impact statements prior to her sentencing. Doctors say RSV cases are increasing. Representatives with Norton Children's in Louisville say what they are seeing this season is different than last year. They say the majority of RSV cases last year were in October and November. And so by this point, the cases started to trend down. 
Currently, Dr. Christina Bryant with Norton Children says they have 28 children hospitalized for RSV, eight are in the intensive care unit. The majority are under a year of age, and, and that's what we would expect. The youngest is about a month of age. Doctors say this current spike is higher than any peak Norton Children's has had last season. A Southern Kentucky family says it's an unspeakable loss that they believe was so preventable. The Sheriff's Department in Laurel County says a man is dead because of a crash involving a drunk driver. It happened Tuesday night near London. WYMT's Phil Pendleton spoke to the victim's son about the devastating loss. In times like this, Teddy Swanson is at a loss for words. I just want to tell my dad wherever he is. <laughs> Swanson's stepfather, Fred Johnson, was killed Tuesday night. He says he's been a father to him for 40 years. Johnson was simply coming home from working on boats at Laurel Lake when police say a drunk driver crashed head on into him. There are so many people that, uh, that this has, you know, that, that this has completely destroyed. You know, he was, uh, he was a very, very well respected man. He had so many, so many friends, so many family. Wesley Allen was driving the truck that police say crossed the center line and slammed into Johnson's Honda Civic. He took a good, honest, decent, hardworking man away from his wife, his kids, his grandchildren, his daughter-in-law, and we can't get him back. We have been able to get a hold of the court records from this crash, and according to what is in that, Wesley Allen's blood alcohol level was twice the legal limit and that he even had an open container of alcohol in the truck with him. Allen is quoted in the police report as admitting that he had a few beers before driving and that his speech was slurred. He's charged with murder. You know, he, he's destroyed his life along with many others. Police say they're still waiting on more lab work as the investigation is ongoing. And in Laurel County, Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. The funeral for Fred Johnson will be at 2 Monday at Bowling Funeral Home in London. Visitation will be after 6 there on Sunday. Moisture continues to increase on this Friday morning, so be sure to pack the jacket as more showers are likely on your Friday morning commute. Let's go on a little bit of a radar tour this morning up on First Alert Pinpoint Doppler. Notice nothing too heavy, but a few moderate pockets of showers out there in some areas. Zooming into portions of Wayne County, also McCreary County, not too far away from Highway 27 and Pine. Not a few moderate showers there. Also some moderate showers in Clay County, not too far away from Manchester. And zooming into portions of Johnson County, just to the north of Paintsville into portions of Lawrence County, also Elliott County as well. And those widespread showers will continue for the first half of your Friday. All thanks to this weather system, the upper portions of Oklahoma, also Texas, that will continue pushing off to the east. So more showers are likely on Friday, especially for the first half of your Friday. And those high temperatures also topping out above average. We should be in the lower 50s. We top out in the upper 50s on Friday. And again, after lunchtime, a little bit of a break as some drier air begins to work in, but a few more spotty rain chances are possible. Madison. Thank you, Cameron, and thank you for joining us on Mountain News this morning. More news is on the way. When we return, a temporary ceasefire between Israel and Hamas is now over, and Israel has a new message for residents in Gaza.